Yo, Vasant here. This is the self proclaimed Geo God, and 1.5 special program live stream thing has just been released. We're gonna react to it, and apparently, his own leads right here. So, I'm excited for that. So, let's see how this is going. Oh, Two twins traveled together throughout the universe. Pretty loud. But one Sorry. day, their path was blocked, and they were separated by an unknown god. Ether! Lumine! And now the two of them are finally reunited yeah. in the Genshin Impact version 1.5 special Wait, really? program. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, oh, everybody. You get both I'm Zach Aguilar, and I voice the male traveler Ether in Genshin Impact. Hey, everyone. I'm Sarah Miller Cruz, and I voice the female traveler Lumine. It's so great that we're together for this program, especially since our characters finally had a chance to meet in version 1. Damn. I know. Tell me about it. I'm so glad that they invited me to the show. I've always been super curious about what it's like to do a special program. It always looked like you and Karina were having so much fun in the previous ones. <laughs> hey, that's what the special program's all about. And today certainly won't be an Zongli. exception as we are joined by Keith Silverstein. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, I like the trumpet there. Very nice. Hi, everybody. My name's Keith Silverstein, and I voice Zhang Li, mm. consultant for the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor in Genshin. Oh, <laughs> yes. I'm excited because there's Zhang, Zhang Li's here. Who, spoiler alert is really Morax. That's right, the Geo Archon, widely respected as Rex Lapis, the god of contracts himself. Yeah. Whew. Talk about a list of titles. And that is exactly why I leave the introductions to you, Zach. Honestly, it's so <laughs> hard to express how much we love your performance in the game, Keith. And I will have me, I obviously mean myself and a lot of other players. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, it is really an honor to uh, play a role that's loved by so many, myself included, of course. And uh, come on, how exciting is this? I, I'm so excited that I'm doing a version preview with you guys. This is going to be great. Yeah, so why don't we take a quick moment to thank our viewers for joining us today and for their amazing support of Genshin Impact. a code or what? Thank you so, so much, everyone. Yes, big thank you to the entire Genshin Impact community. Thanks for your love and support. So, Keith, what do you think of Genshin Impact so far? Well, I mean, we all know it's an amazing game. I mean, uh, you just need right more content, that, to be honest. You know, the graphics, the character design, everything. But the thing that really has blown me away has really been just the fan base. Just that this game is so popular worldwide, and uh, I mean, it's such an honor to be a part of something like that. Totally agree. I've loved interacting with the fan base myself, and currently I'm still on the grind. <laughs> uh, I just love I'm the done with the grind, the so. Are absolutely beautiful, and I also love playing Need the game more content. On whenever I can't get to my PC. So hopefully this will have a lot of more replayable content. What have you enjoyed the most in version 1.4 so far? Ooh, you know, that's... Ah, it's so tough because I love all the mini games, but I think my favorite one is Ballads of Breeze. And I just love getting out my lyre, too, as I travel I around. I hate that Tibet one. I don't like Red Rhythm songs. games, to be honest. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Sharing my music. I didn't even genius. finish that. I just did it one time, and I was <laughs> like, not, yeah, I don't want to do it no more. Too far there, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you're good and all, but... Uh... Genius? Yeah, I'm sure you're great. Uh, anyways, I believe many of our viewers are waiting to hear more about what's in yeah, store yeah. for version 1.5. So why don't we start things off with a quick overview? Sounds great. Take it away, Zach. You got it. In version 1.5, we'll have some brand new characters, several yes. cool new monsters, and various special events. We'll also new area, have an though. all new feature to explore. And as always, there will feature, be some huh? optimizations and adjustments to our overall gaming experience. Wow, very nice. <laughs> Aside from all the new content, Genshin Impact is also having its native release for PlayStation 5 on April 28th. The I mean, same day version 1.5 I mean, comes online. I mean, technically you can play it so on PS5 already. Exciting. But. Totally. It's great news for our PlayStation 5 players out there. Yeah, we'll get a first glimpse of version 1.5 from the trailer. But before we get to that, I'd like to remind our viewers that we'll be giving away redemption codes right, throughout right. the stream. I got them ready because I woke up late, so this is... We have Primo Gems. Yeah, and just remember that they might appear at any time during the show, so be sure to stick around for those. Okay, now let's take a first look at the official trailer for Genshin Impact version 1.5, Beneath the Light of Jadeite. Jadeite? Is he trying to make it rhyme on purpose? Oh, this! It is fated. We will meet again. But well, that's the little girl in front of the that tree? Or no. It must have been about four or five days ago. There were a few men who came through here carrying baskets and picks. Oh, it is the lady the lady at the tree. 
and there was a child staggering in front of them. She can be a new character. <laughs> no, just oh god. Oh, it's a demon that was like just being a tree. If only, if only they released this while the Geovichet were out, because it pretty much reminds me of a Geovichet. Then upon it, here comes Zhongli. Quake. There's a fine line between good and evil. This is order. Yeah. Humanity that attacks the ley lines that sustained me. So here lies the wisdom of the gods. Long Lee's just gonna tank everything. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Huh? Does this count as martial arts? Oh, who this is? Uh, Yen Yen Fei. Incinerate! Oh, ice. Wait, ice cube? They finally have an ice cube? Inadmissible evidence! Well, I guess wait, who are we missing? We have Geo, Animal, sorry. Electro. We don't have a Pyro Cube. Oh, you left? Softly. Others may find it easier to forgive me. But the only reason they think oh. that is because they've never been branded a pariah before. I condemn you. Freeze to the core. Freeze to the core. Eye for an eye. Who's the new monster? A new Fatui Electro Mage or something? Vengeance will be mine. She looks nice. This serenity pot is all yours now. Serenity pot? <laughs> co-op used to demonstrate effects. They need to make everything co-op, to be honest. Oh. You do the quest in co-op. Or solo. For a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. Oh. She will explain everything you need to know about it. I'm so confused what this is. I mean... Okay. Oh, it's the housing stuff. Oh, the house stuff is coming out. For a second I was like, wait, what is this? You put your own house or tent or whatever. I see, I see. Interesting. Mm. Oh, the song remix. Where Zhongli is coming back? Yeah, all my gems going that. Try to get a C2. <laughs> ah, okay, so they do have a home thing. Animals? What the hell? And the Amplifier Initiation? Um, they have a slow version of Zhongli's theme. Oh, yeah. Dungeon. How you gather loot for this? Hopefully, it's more RNG for the dungeon. <laughs> you become a box, and you're like, "Oh, where do you want to put it?" <laughs> hmm. We need Tomo. Uh. Okay. Okay. Overflowing mastery. Oh, and the uh, second hangout, Diona. New artifact. Oh! I'm still thinking if I want to use that for Zongli. I don't know if I need it for Zongli, to be honest, because I'm new DPS. I forgot what the bottom one is. I only saw the Geo wow, one. There was a lot going on in that trailer. It looks like Zhongli is going to have a new storyline here with a super tough looking dragon to fight. So be careful out there, Zach. Yeah, Venti didn't get a I've leveled thing up to a fight. lot since the last version. Uh -huh. This dragon's got nothing on me. Yeah, sure, Zach. You really expect us to believe that? <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I'm excited for these new characters. They look super cool. 
Yeah, and that sounds like a solid place to start, so why don't I begin by introducing the new characters first? Sounds good to me. Development version? I mean, it really looked good for development. Walking them high heels. That butt. <laughs> Claymore, right? It looks like a Claymore fight, but then the sword looks like a sword, not a Claymore. I forgot, it was uh, rumors and leaks, but I wasn't paying attention too much. You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? Blade work? <laughs> Sounds like a sword right, thing. Then. I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you alright. Mark my word. That's Introducing just... our new playable character, Eula, captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company. She carries a cryovision and elegantly wields her frost. Oh, a claymore. Okay, yeah, the way claymore. she handles her weapon is truly amazing. Uh, like, she even did a cartwheel okay. with her sword. No wonder she's called the Spindrift Knight. Yeah, her combat Spindrift. style really stands out. Um, forget fighting. Her style is more like dancing or gymnastics. Seriously, she doesn't move like and she throws her sword down at, at the final hit. Her motions are way lighter and more fluid. Perhaps that's a result of the training passed down through her aristocratic bloodline. Oh, mm. she's a descendant of the family that was once overthrown by the Knights of Favonius, right? Mm hmm, that is correct. Ooh, I'm sensing a complex backstory here. Oh. Now, the question comes why would she be serving in the Knights of Favonius? I don't know, for revenge? Maybe. I don't know. Well, yes and no. Although Eula often talks about taking revenge on others, she doesn't seem to mean it for real. As strange as it sounds, mm. it's just her own way of expressing care for other people. Let's have a look at her skills, shall we? Yes, please. With her elemental skill, Ice Tide Vortex, Eula slashes swiftly, dealing cryo damage. However, her elemental skill has different effects depending on whether you tap or hold the skill button. Ooh, interesting. Just only. Tell us more. Yeah. When tapping the elemental skill, Eula gains a stack of Grimheart by hitting an opponent. Grimheart increases Eula's defense and resistance to interruption. Uh, okay. Sounds cool for a Claymore wielder. What will happen if we hold her elemental skill then? I was hoping you would ask that. When the skill is held, Eula consumes the stacks of Grimheart, and surrounding opponents will have their physical resistance and cryo resistance decreased. Now, each stack of Grimheart consumed will be converted into Another an blade. ice world brand that deals cryo damage to nearby opponents. Ooh, I'm loving her Auto. Grimheart mechanic already. Yeah, me too. Eula's elemental burst, Glacial Illumination, deals cryo damage to nearby opponents and creates a lightfall sword that follows her around for a certain duration. When her own normal attacks, around, huh? elemental skill and elemental burst deal damage to opponents, they will charge the lightfall sword until it explodes violently once its duration ends. An explosive oh. icy sword. So you get stacks by wow. getting attacking. That seems you know, almost blow. like a contradiction. I mean, ice that explodes? <laughs> it's like mixing opposites. Right? But it's somehow fitting for her character, you know? A noble heir who joins the family's arch enemy, who moves elegantly but causes violent explosions, who manipulates cryo element but is called the Spindrift Knight. She's full of contradictions. Like, nice, Sarah. <laughs> That's pretty deep. Thanks. <laughs> hey, why don't we take a look at our next new playable character in version 1.5? Sounds good. Yu Fei. Oh, Yang, Yang Fei. Oh, yeah, the, what the hell? She, she fired like. She loses her balance. I like Klee pretty much, but you know. A lot long range and faster because it's freaking just fireballs. He's like doing Hadouken but with a weird pose. <laughs> you just summon a giant weight or a bell or something and dropped it on them. Need a cure for insomnia? Huh. Let me read you the history of the development of Liyue's legal system. None of my friends have ever lasted longer than 20 minutes. 
The other oh new playable character in version 1.5 is Yenfei. Yenfei, yeah. A legal advisor active in Liyue Harbor. She's a catalyst wielder and holds a pyrovision. Interestingly enough, she happens to be part illuminated beast. Oh, just like Ganyu. What exactly. beast is this? So, are those two sticks on her head her version of horns? Or are they more like antlers? Wait, I thought those were her pigtails, no? No. No, Zach, not at all. Oh. No, those <laughs> are the symbol what? of her illuminated beast heritage. Oh, okay, so I just Preston, noticed them. Would that mean she knows Rex Lapis then? Or would she be bound by a contract with Morax in some way? You mean like as a legal advisor for the God of Contracts? That would be quite the big title, but yeah, something like that? Even Morax doesn't have command of all the illuminated beasts. Yenfei is one of the few that didn't sign a contract with mm. Oh, why is that? She was born in a peaceful era. Therefore, there was no need for her to fight in any cruel wars like her predecessors. Interestingly, as a free illuminated beast, she's put herself in a profession where her job is to interpret laws and help others deal with conflicts and disputes. Oh, there okay, might be a question so for that. work is all related to contracts, right? Because I know I saw some sort of gigantic pyro stamp slamming down when she Oh, attacked. it's a stamp. Uh. You know, like the kind of thing you'd see used to stamp a contract? Mm-hmm. You are correct. Both her normal attack, her elemental skill signed edict, and her elemental burst done deal grant her scarlet seals, which decrease Yen Fei's stamina. Just like Ning Wang. These scarlet seals are not the big seal you saw. Oh, so the scarlet seals must have been all those little red markings floating around her. That's right. When Ning she Guang. uses her charged attack, Yen Fei consumes all scarlet seals, which in turn increase her charged attack's area of effect and damage. Oh, so that's what I saw. It sure was. Oh, uh, one thing uh, I forgot to mention is that Yula and Yenfei have some special connections to one another. Uh, what would a knight in Mondstadt have to do with a legal advisor in Liyue Harbor? Sounds like a mystery. Maybe they were friends growing up. Who knows? One which the travelers will get to discover on their own. Leave it to me. Um, rude. Leave it to us. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Us. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too. And that's all the latest we have on the new characters. Wait a minute. Didn't you forget something? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I, I have a pretty good memory, Zach. Elemental skill, Zach elemental burst. Where we'll get to pull these adorable new characters from, right? Yeah. Oh, what about the we'll burst? Get to that all, all in good time. <laughs> Right now seems to be a good time for us to give away our first redemption code. Oh, right, we're now? Gonna, we're going to skip this. <laughs> like I said, you never know when they'll appear. Precisely. The first code will be unearthed in... Yeah, okay, I already got this, so we're going to skip ahead. 1.5. The two Zhong Li is coming back. Yeah. Five-star characters Zhong Li and Yu. All right, I know you guys are anxious to there hear more. Yeah, Yang Fei with Zhong Li, yes. Five-star characters Zhong Li and so I can give, try to get for both. Successively in their own separate event wishes. Many of the players have been waiting for Zhong Li's return, and it's finally happening. Yeah. The players have been waiting. I've been waiting. Okay, to elaborate, <laughs> Yen Fei will be featured in Zhong Li's event wish, Gentry of Hermitage. The exact dates and durations for the event wishes will be officially announced later. Aside Later, huh? new characters, but it's first, right? A new five star weapon and two sets of new artifacts will also be released in version 1.5. Ooh, very cool. That, uh, that what's is that a physical set? Ornate. What is it this? Sort of reminds me of the five star bow Elegy for the Eye yeah, from version 1.4. Is. Oh, physical damage. Oh, physical damage this set. This new five star claymore right. is called Song of Broken Pines, and it has a physical damage bonus. It has quite a poetic name mm, too. Do I want to get twenty? It belongs to the same attack. series as Elegy for the End. A gladiator, Perhaps. or just go for this and get twenty percent HP for Zombie. There only. may even be a hidden story behind them. Ooh, I already feel a story coming. You know, whenever Keith even mentions the word story, I just want to break out the popcorn. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Uh, let me guess, it's a very epic and. Oh wait, that's actually story. good for Zongli. Story. Elemental skill <laughs> hit the opponent. Imaginations, you know that? Look, aside from the weapon, three seconds. Two sets of new so you put down the, the pillar and it'll keep hitting and pulsing. The Millilith and pale flame. And then you keep Ooh, getting awesome. attack increase. If past updates are any indication, my bet would be that they'll be in a new domain. But then you don't get and the geo. The new domain, Power, though, Ridge Watch, will be available to travelers after the version update. Now it's uh, located in the mountainous area that's still thinking about want to get that for only. Finally. 
for getting a teleport waypoint there. That's always been one of the harder areas for players to reach. Yeah, I bet a lot of people have used their portable waypoints to get there. Now we can save those for some other places. <laughs> In addition to the new gear, some new storylines will be released too. After the version 1.5 update, Diona's yeah. hangout event and Act 2 of Noelle's hangout event will be available for players to enjoy. So. Act 2 with Noelle? That is so sweet. I really love the hangout memory illustrations with Noelle. Okay, but that's not the only Act 2 we're getting in version 1.5. Ooh. Act 2 of Zhongli's story quest will be released in the update as well, followed by Yula's own story quest. Wow, mm. I already can't wait to see more of Zhongli's storyline. Can you tell us more about what's going to happen, Keith? Well, as you saw in the trailer, the dragon Ejdaha, who seems to have some, let's say, history with Zhongli, will be making an appearance in Zhongli's story quest. Sounds interesting, but uh, who exactly is this Ejdaha? Is that oh, giant It was mentioned in the about the nameless treasure. Oh. Seems like Mr. Zhongli's past is finding its way back to him. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. Oh good. And meeting those who share Wait, the, the, the character just like disappearing completely. Sarah, look, it's him. Ah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Okay. In a word, Ejdaha is going to play an important role in Zhongli's story quest. And the disturbance he causes uh, will also pose a serious threat to Lyra. Uh, Furthermore, this dragon will become a weapon we boss. So let's take a closer look at it in battle. What does it drop though? Of course, only pillars. Wait, if he breaks down, that means you can use those pillars again, right? Because no way Zongli can have all those pillars out at once. Tree for a tail. Does it mean the tree will disappear? Shield man, it was only just, ta just tank it. <laughs> All right, then. Mm. I don't know, it actually looks like a giant cute. frog in a way. Oh, Sarah wants a new pet now. <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> cute, like it's gonna rip off my head. <laughs> no, I mean, it's got that little cute smirk happening. I think it's kind of cute. Oh, that's true, right? And and it's got those branches on its tail. And and remember this place. There was a girl standing under a tree, mumbling about the awakening of some most awe-inspiring individual. Remember? Oh, right. Yeah, so she yeah. was talking about Ejdaha. She was. Beneath the tree, or as it's called, the Dragon Queller, is the dragon cavern queller. where Ejdaha was sealed away. This new monster reminds me of Geo Bishops. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. They have plenty of similar traits. As a boss, Ejdaha can change its element, hence the different colors you see on its body. It seems like when it switches its element, the surroundings and the domain change too. Oh, looks like there will be a variety of conditions for us to deal with. Ooh, are you excited, Zach? Well, with all the lessons I've learned from fighting Geo Bishops, I'm confident that I can crush this Lord of Bishops. Good luck, Zach. You're the man. <laughs> okay, the next new monster we're about to meet will be a new member of the Hypostasis family. There we go. Bio Hypostasis. Let's see it in action. Water there? Oh god. He's not telling me the actual water. Okay. <laughs> Wait, do, we, do we have a hydro one? We don't have a hydro one. We don't have a hydro or a pyro one. Yeah, giant wheel. Okay, okay. When the cryohypostasis reaches low HP, it enters a shield to protect itself and recover from the damage. In the meanwhile, it attacks its enemies. Which means us. Huh, but it seems like we'll never be able to finish it off if we can't break the shield. So how can we take its shield down? Pyro damage? Oh, I know the answer to this one. Travelers will need to figure it out on their own in version 1.5. <laughs> and with that, the apprentice has become the master. <laughs> yes, you are getting the idea. And there's one other new enemy we're going to see in version 1.5. Perhaps you two remember oh, yeah, the... this herald we encountered in version 1.4? Oh, 
you mean that gigantic blue dude that works for me? Well, technically, he would be my gigantic blue dude if you are the traveler. Oh, okay, sorry. Seriously, but that's not the... speaker about everything? Yes. <laughs> but that's not the, anyway, the canon. It, it turns out that another one of the Abyss Order's elite monsters will be making a debut in version 1.5. The Abyss Lector. Lector. Let's take a look, shall we? Damn. His head is weird, though. Albedo, yo. Geo power, unite. Okay, one thing to be noted is that some of the Abyss Lector's attacks will decrease characters' elemental energy once they hit their opponents. So be sure to dodge those. Only mental energy. energy. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, Zach. Mm. I know you well enough. What are you thinking about over there? <laughs> well, the Abyss Herald we met before was like an assassin, whereas this Abyss Lector we see now seems more like a mage. The Herald could manipulate the Hydro element, while the Lector manipulates the Electro element. Now that I think about it, what if I could put them on my team? Well, I mean, yeah, practically speaking, that would make a very good team. <laughs> Well, that could be what the lost sibling was thinking. <laughs> I'm sure the lost sibling said, I will have order. Oh. And now we have the Abyss Order. <laughs> <laughs> this well, order. That's everything we have for our new monsters. So next, we will get a peek of an all new permanent feature called yeah, the house, right? Teapot. Serenity. Which will be available tea. starting in version well, one. Why do you specify the tea? Zach, I'll leave this part to you. Got it. After we help the city get through its crisis, the Adepti of Liyue have taken note of our hard work. Knowing we are outlanders who often camp out in the wilds, they decided to give us a Serena teapot as a gift. Serena teapot. Camping in the wilds? Zach, we never camp. Yeah, we, we just keep adventuring through the night. <laughs> yeah. Serena <laughs> teapot. I like the name. So is this Serena Serenity. teapot sort of like Madame Ping's magical teapot? Yeah, it's what's known as a realm within. Ooh, oh, okay, so that's how you get in. Really you just put down a pot and they'll teleport you there. To make. Well, the Adepti of Liu are mighty illuminated beings with great power. Creating a realm within is nothing but creating a little trinket for them. Keith, you sound so cool. Uh, you anyways, sound cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're breathtaking. <laughs> no, you're breathtaking. This so called teapot. For starters, there are three different cool. realm layouts for us to choose from. Floating Abode, Emerald Peak, and mm. Cool Isle. I kind of like the wow. Floating Abode. So this is what the Adepti would consider just a trinket? <laughs> Inside the realm, you'll find Tubby, Tubby, a teapot spirit who manages all the general affairs in the realm within. Hmm, oh, just like a butler. Oh my gosh, Tubby is Trust so rank. round and cute! I love it! Next. And it plays an important role in our realm, too. When we raise its trust rank, it will give us some rewards and unlock new features for our realm. For example, the three different realm layouts. We'll have to increase our trust rank if we want to unlock them all. Okay, so question. If I rub Tubby, you will it? it grant me three wishes? What are you talking about, rub Tubby? Rub his tummy. Tubby? Okay, okay. I was just thinking, you know, magic lamp, magic teapot. So anyway, how do we increase trust rank with Tubby then? Get items. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we create new furnishings, Tubby's trust increases. Moreover, with the help of the teapot spirit, we'll collect various blueprints from different sources. Once we've collected the necessary materials for creating furnishings, we can make those furnishings in the Serena teapot and use them to decorate our home. Of course, we can also okay. buy some furnishings directly from Tubby. Good. I'd like an ornate glaze lily pattern incense burner. Really? That's a super specific choice. Well, I'm a super specific guy. <laughs> anyway, this Serena teapot will be... Now, only Animal Crossing was like this, where you can just manage. put things down. They can take their time considering how to decorate the space and can fill it with the things they like to make it feel like home. I see. Okay, uh, then let's prepare some radiant grade Noctilucus Jade for starters. Okay, first of all, your standard of home is way too high. And that's wrong because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? You do you. You do you. 
Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, if we are short of any practical decoration ideas, we can also apply to enter our friends' realms for some inspiration. We can just stop by for Yula. a and snap some nice photos. Ooh, that means we can throw parties in our personal realms. That'll be so fun. Are you going to put me on your mm. ultra-exclusive guest list, Zach? <laughs> nope. Zach! <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, we're going from roughing it in the wild to luxurious house parties. I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, mm. and the realms seem very large, too. Large seem enough to unleash your imagination. Yeah, we can create views of a lot of stuff actually. And arrange yeah. the layouts of furnishings. And as we put more furnishings into the Serena teapot, our adeptal this energy increases, cool. enabling the realm to produce more realm currency. So, more furnishings increase adeptal energy. I like the sound of that. I knew you'd like that. So, with this new realm currency you mentioned comes a new way of exchanging it, I suppose? That's right. We can Transient exchange realm currency for a variety of materials and rewards. And sometimes a teapot traveling salesman carrying realm treasures might appear. So be sure to check it out. Noted. Oh, you can buy, um, Ooh, there's already a lot on everyone's to-do list for this feature. And there might be even more to come in the future. It's like hey, Animal Crossing. Let's wait and see Genshin. what the Serena teapot holds okay. for us in store together. Okay. I will. And in the meantime, I will stuff my realm with satisfying furnishings. All right, just please don't make Tubby work too hard. I won't. And as always, I'm sure the travelers will cover my expenses. Uh, huh? Wait, um, wait a minute. What? Can we even afford that? Well, I mean, with the two of you together, you might be able to cover it. I don't have any. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should have seen your faces right then. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's all the news we have for the upcoming oh Serena <laughs> Teapot feature. In the next section, we'll get to learn about some exciting events that will be exclusive to version 1.5. But now it seems about time to give away our second redemption code. Yeah, more rewards. Oh, okay, let's get around. Speaking, the faster you act, the better. Goodies inbound in three. Welcome back, right. adventurers. It's time to unveil the special events coming in version Special events, huh? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so first on the list is an event called Energy Amplifier Initiation. In this event, a Sumeru oh. researcher will ask us to gather Irminsul fruit fragments. For a time, we'll be entrusted with a mysterious ancient relic, the Energy Amplifier. With this relic, we can unleash the power of the fragments we collect. During the event, this Energy Amplifier will give us right? effects in Your combat. Here. So it really is literally amplifying our abilities. Speaking of ancient relics, I feel like Mr. Zhongli would know something about that. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at me for? You know I'm not really Zhongli, right? Oh. But I do happen <laughs> to have some insight on the energy amplifier. For one, there are variations of how you can configure the fragments into the energy amplifier. I one see. variable, motive force, affects how many fragments one can configure. The higher the sum of your character's levels, the higher motive force you can provide to the energy amplifier. With higher motive force, players will be able to equip more high-quality fragments to strengthen their team. What if I don't have enough what? characters at higher levels? As always, Zach, that's where your friends come in. You can borrow up to three characters three. from your friends to increase your motive force. You got that, Zach? Oh, friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> uh, so the question then is, how do we gather all the fragments? There are plenty of fragments spread all over the map. We'll search for the fragments in places of interest throughout the open world. But it won't be easy to get treasures as powerful as Irminsul fruit fragments. Now, players really? will have to get rid of any trouble circling around the fragments before they're able to collect them. Ah, that makes sense. And we'll also be able to enter something called a Twisted Realm Domain. in the later phase of the event. Twisted Realm? Sounds like a teapot gone wrong. Is that a mini <laughs> <Not> abyss? <exactly. laughs> there are four domains in the Twisted Realm, and each has different bizarre twists. We'll be mm. able to select the difficulty and conditions for the domains we enter, just as in the previous hypostatic. Yeah, event. there we go. This is exciting. Of course, higher difficulties will grant better rewards. Okay, so this will be one for players who are looking for some serious challenges. Yes. And I should mention that a contract with Diona, the bartender of Mondstadt, will be one of the various rewards from the event shop. Oh, it sounds like Diona, you, can you play. By participating in all kinds of activities from the event. That's right. Go get her. It's time to play Genshin again, just for this. Battlefront, Misty Dungeon. Huh? 
This sounds like a completely different kind of game. In this event, there will be six themed trials for us to complete, and we'll only be able to use characters from a set pool of trial characters from the event. Throughout the trials, our team will not form any elemental resonance, and food and potions in our inventory will also not be accessible. Oh, damn. Ah, now that sounds tough. <laughs> but before each trial, we can preview the monsters we'll we'll be encountering, yeah. along with some corresponding tips and tasks. So, it is possible for us to choose characters that fit the conditions before we start. Nice, right? Yeah. Obeyed oh, oath. No well. So, what do we need to do to pass these trials? No Bennett, huh? In each trial, players need to activate all three of the ancient runes within the time limit to gain access to the final challenge. There are benediction mechanics with the trials, which allow players to obtain certain bonus effects and make it easier to complete the trials. At the same time, there are also some automated okay. weapon systems that will detect and attack any intruders. Players will need to use the appropriate reactions to temporarily disable these devices. We're definitely going to have to use our heads to get the oh right God. strategies. Totally, and with rewards like Primo Gems, Mora, it sounds and fun though, waiting, actually, this part. But then I wish I could do it in co op. But. Primo Gems? Oh, I'm in. Our next event is called Mimi Tomo. Sounds Hillichurlian? You nailed it! This event is about a certain unusual hilly churl we might encounter in various locations. Right. I see. Uh, the one that throws primo gems at players, right? Okay, to viewers who are searching for where you can find this unusual hilly churl right now, just know you can't actually use the primo gems it throws at you. Lately, Ish. this unusual hilly churl has been stirring up trouble on the merchant routes. It's time for us to teach it a lesson. But this hilly churl is not an easy one to trace. So, we'll need to borrow some help from an expert. Perhaps you remember the hilly churlian expert, Ella Musk? Ella Musk? Yeah, you mean that little girl in the library? Reminds you of Ella Musk? It's time for her to teach us a lesson. <laughs> yeah, we'll be utilizing the handy handbook of hilly churlian from her to communicate with other hilly churls for intel on the whereabouts of this unusual hilly churl. That seems like fun. Wait, I already know where it is, sure though. I can memorize that much hilly churlian. You can write it down, Zach. Or okay. you can take a screenshot. Oh, yeah, a screenshot. Now that's good advice. The only question now is, how reliable is this handy handbook of Hilly Churlian? After all, it has a disclaimer on its title page saying it cannot be held responsible for any consequences of its use. Wait, so you're saying it could potentially do more harm than good? If that's the case, we'll have to persuade the Hilly Churls by physical means. Ooh, now that's what I'm talking about. Yes. It could be quite persuasive that way. That wouldn't be persuasion. That's Wait, intimidation. Now I'm confused. <laughs> We're talking about bribing them with some apples or something, right? Like that. Oh, this one's stronger. It doesn't die instantly. Oh, apples. Yeah, yeah apples. <laughs> and now you're making me feel like I'm a bad person. <laughs> anyway. We we'll get furnishings. We'll gain some furnishing blueprints, primo gems, and other rewards from the event. So be sure not to miss out on this one. This is the king one. Our next event is simply called Win Trace. Personally, I'd like to call it Hide and Seek. Oh. All right, sounds fun. And in case you're wondering, Win Trace actually originates from when ancient nobles were hunting for rebels in Mondstadt. Oh, we can do co-op. Uh, okay. Now things are starting to sound a little bit scary. <laughs> no worries, Zach. Today it's transcended from its dark history, passing down only the names of the two sides. 1.5 seems a lot better than 1.4, I just say. So not not buys anything that Zhongli's here, but I'm you know. You asked, Zach. The event seems will be more battle combat zones. oriented and stuff. They will be allocated one of the two sides, the hunter or the rebels. The oh, rebels hide and, and the hunter seeks. But there's more to it than just that. The rebels can use their windward arts to disguise themselves, place bait, or temporarily enter a hidden state. All right, sounds interesting. How about the hunter? What can they do? The hunter can use various arts to detect the location of the rebels and disable their tricks and disguises. So, the two sides are really going at it then. <laughs> yeah, and during the game, favors will descend upon the area at random, and both sides can pick up these favors to help charge up their own so-called secret favor. There are five contested huh. zones in the open world, so those who are familiar with all the and terrain will have some advantages. Good news for those treasure chest hunters out there. <laughs> yeah. Players will obtain Wind Trace coins from the event and unlock a variety of rewards, including a Wind Trace themed name card. 
But mm. if you play the game in co-op mode with your friends, or if you've already reached the daily limit of obtainable win trace coins, then you won't be able to- Wait, you don't get it in co-op? Oh my oh, god, that's geez. stupid. I oh. hope you all enjoy this little game. They need to make it in co-op too. Event is called to get coins. Well, what's the point in playing co-op? Hmm, we had ley line overflow before, right? We don't even get bonuses. That's right. Only this time, mm. we will have doubled talent level up materials. During the event, we will have three okay. chances daily to collect double rewards using original resin from selected domains original. of mastery. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time we'll have an event that doubles talent level up materials. That's huge. Exactly. So if you need to grind for talent level up materials, why not make it double for chance. fragile? I bet everybody's uh, I mean, fragile. gonna love that. Condensed resin too. All right, that's about all we have for the special events okay, in version okay. one point five. As always, the last part of our version previews will be regarding new optimizations and adjustments coming to the game. Keith, would you like to explain the coming changes for version 1.5 to our viewers? Sure thing. Reduce to half? From version 1.5, the cost of original resin to claim rewards for the first three weekly bosses oh, really? will be reduced from 60 to Damn. 30. Damn. Okay, that's half the cost. Yeah, and we'll have a total of four weekly bosses, so that means we'll be able to yeah, get okay. rewards from all the weekly bosses using a single day's resin. And we'll even have ten original resin left over. Oh, check you out, Sarah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, after the version update, character companionship experience gained while playing in team with other players in co-op mode will be doubled. So, oh, if you I know that was a thing. Our friendship with some characters and learn more about their stories. We can defeat bosses or clear domains with other players in co-op mode. Oh yes, no need to remind me on the importance of friends again. Oh, well, sorry, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> need some more of those. The third optimization will be about mailing alerts for when events are ending. After the version, oh really? Of the Genshin okay. Impact will send mail alerts to players before any limited time events end. Yeah, considering all the unique and a thousand, and a thousand more from those limited time events. It would be a pity to miss them. Definitely. For players who are too busy to check the end time of each event, the mail alert will for sure come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. Our last optimization, coming in version 1.5, will be about slimming down the game's overall size. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. With this oh. optimization, players can manage the voiceover files they've installed. If you no longer want to keep the audio files for a certain language, you can delete the corresponding voiceover. I didn't know they were there to be with. And that audio pack will not update in future version updates. I imagine that could save quite a bit of space. I yeah. know audio files can be massive. Aw, but what if they decide to delete the English voiceovers? No, don't delete us, please. Don't you want to hear more of me? Well, there's not much of us in there anyway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess it doesn't hurt that much when you put it that way. No, 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 no it, it does hurt because Zhongli has a lot to say. So, so please keep keep the English files. <laughs> <laughs> if you like us, too much though. Please keep the English voiceovers, everyone. And on that note, it's time to release the third redemption code to our loyal viewers. Yay! Are you ready? Else? I think it's about time to wrap up the show. Ooh, okay, okay. Time really flew by. Yeah. Not by their name, but it seems a lot better. I just wish I that like more of it is more co-op oriented. So I don't know how to see more about it, but the high and seek thing, uh, why can't that be co-op? Because people can like, oh, um, just like purposely really really lose, but still, just make it like a time limit or something. This was super fun. Yeah, I hope so too. Or maybe, um, how did you like doing the special program? I don't know. Are you kidding? I love this. I mean, what's maybe better maybe than some of it. make all of these announcements? I mean, everyone's so hyped to find out what's in store, yeah. and uh, we get to be the people to share that with them. So uh, it's amazing. Plus, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, time. reaction thing live stream. Yeah, me too. One point five <laughs> special program. All right. Thanks for watching the Genshin Impact version one point five special program, everyone. And I hope you all have fun in your teapots. Bye everybody. Later days. In version 1 .5. Wait, 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 because what? We have an extra special surprise for you. What's this? Check this out. Sneak peek? Oh, wait, what? What is this? Oh my god. New area when? Next? 1.6? A lot of places. Oh, like a 
samurai. Alright. I gotta put these all together <laughs> later days.